Hello and welcome back to another episode of this series online which I am putting together in partnership with Malvika Mehta of M-Line. Now we've already understood the benefits of having lime as your primary binder on your construction site. And we were very keen to start using it as early as possible in the construction process. We wanted to include it in our civil work. One of the easiest and quickest ways to bring lime into your project is in the civil works, i.e. lime mortars and lime plasters. The way I see it, both plaster and mortar really are the same a uh, fundamental mix one is applied as a bedding mortar and the other is a plastering mortar so to speak so like i said earlier lime is a binder and a standard ratio that we would use is say 1 is to 3 where we take one lime binder and three aggregate which is essentially an inert filler and we combine them and we create what is basically a workable sticky mix that will then behave as effectively glue and adhere to the substrate, adhere to the masonry units, create what we call a mortar and perform that function of binding. The first opportunity for us to use lime in our construction was as mortar in our stone and our brick walls. Lime on its own, just the way we don't use cement on its own, we don't use lime on its own. Lime only becomes strong or begins achieving strength when it is dispersed and distributed through the inert particles that we call aggregate. This aggregate is typically sand and this could be river sand, it could be M sand, it could be crushed stone dusts of various varieties. The key aspect of aggregates is that they need to be inert and the particle size needs to be well graded and sharp angular particles will help perform as aggregates better. And then we have lime binders or well even cement binder what you're looking for are small particles that round particles that distribute themselves in the voids of the aggregate and slip and slide between those voids create a nice plastic mix that you can then just lay on. We used three different types of mixes during our construction process. The first mix was a simple lime and sand mix which we used for our wall plasters. Since the internal walls and plasters are not exposed to the elements, this soft plaster can actually be used very comfortably indoors. But for external walls, we had to increase the strength of this plaster by adding some pozzolanic materials. So while lime and sand, one is to three, is the standard starting, most breathable, straightforward, simple plaster mix that almost will always work for the interior. We also need to balance a soft, a highly soft, a highly plastic and a highly breathable plaster, sometimes with hardness, which is what we desire for an exterior plaster that's being slapped on by rainy, windy, salty conditions. So in order to do this, we introduce sometimes what are traditionally known as pozzolanic additives to our plaster mixes and mortar mixes. A pozzolanic material, again, this is a vernacular Italian word. What it really means is a is the equivalent of saying a hardener and what this does is that it introduces tiny air pockets throughout the thickness of the uh, application whether it's a 12 mm or a 20 mm thick plaster or it's a mortar bed it creates tiny air pockets so that not only the surface area but throughout the thickness of the application you've got air, air exposure and therefore a faster and harder set so materials that would do this are ash are Another common one in certain parts of India is uh, what is called surki, which is a very specific kind of burnt brick or burnt terracotta powder. Ceramic tile dust is another example of a, um, of a puzzle. And we use ash uh, a lot because it's a waste product. It's easy for us to access and we use it as a byproduct from our kills. So we know it's we, we can rely and depend on its consistency. 
Exposed stone walls needed a harder plaster for which we added the burnt brick powder known as surkhi locally as the pozzolanic material. For the floor bedding mortar, we added ash to increase the strength of this mortar and give it a longer life. It's very critical is that these are used with caution because what you don't want to do is put too much pozzolan and end up with a overly brittle plaster that is crack prone, that is not dense enough and so on. Our uh, recommended guide at M Lime is one fat lime, two and a half sand and half ash. If you add pozzolanic material like burnt brick powder in your mixes, be careful of not going overboard. When we added too much of brick powder in our mix, we found our walls to start becoming a bit porous and the rainwater beating down on it started to enter inside. As Malvika correctly said, we have to use these pozzolanic materials with caution. In this video, you have seen how you can introduce lime in the civil work of your building construction. I hope you have found these ideas useful for your sustainable project. If you have any questions or queries, do leave them in the comment section below. If you are finding this series interesting, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow the playlist Building with Lime. I'll see you soon in the next video of this series. Bye-bye.